Hey everybody, Eric Schweitzer from The Gamer, and I'm here with Rhiannon Bevan. Rhiannon, you have the easy job, I think. <laughs> uh, but we'll see how it goes. <laughs> uh, you're here today uh, to tell us why Baldur's Gate 3 deserves Game of the Year. So you say it's the easy job. Yeah. But I feel like condensing it into an answer that actually makes sense to someone else um, is is a job in and of itself. Because um, it's it's too obviously the easy way to say it's very good. <laughs> it <deserves laughs> um, obviously, I need to explain why it's good. Um, and I guess it's probably easier if you uh, grill me a bit. So All right. I'm well, let's let's start here. Uh, I'm I'm fascinated by Baldur's Gate three. I I played this game since it was first in early access. Uh, and I'd love to see the way that it's grown. I am. It, are you surprised that it has such a huge cultural impact seen as it's in a genre that is like typically pretty niche? Phenomenally surprised. I didn't see this coming at all. I didn't play it in early access, but I followed it in early access because I am a big fan of the first two games. Yeah. Um, that made me more surprised because right. uh, as fantastic as those games are, they are very hard to get into. I mean, if you just look at them, it's going to put a lot of people off. Um, and they they didn't really have the staying power of like some older, older um, RPGs that have been shown more love over the years, like Fallout, for example. Um, so I thought this was going to be a game that like the classic fans said was really good. And then maybe some people check out with Curiosity, maybe like some Dragon Age fans who have been waiting a billion years for the next game. Yeah. I did not see it becoming a thing that like my non gaming friends were like, Hey, shall I buy a PS five so I can play this? Like I, it's completely taken me by surprise. Yeah. I think it's taken Larry by surprise as well, quite frankly. Right. Because I mean, uh, on the one hand, well, the divinity games, um, are beloved, at least the last two, um, I know that they've been making those games for a long time. Um, is this not just kind of a reskin of Divinity? It's it's taken what worked with Divinity and just turning it up to eleven. It's uh. it's because it's not just like I think at first I was like, okay, this works because it's these oh it's the CRPGs, a genre which usually doesn't have like mass appeal, um, and a genre which I think a lot of publishers are scared of, and it's making them accessible is a weird word but like i guess more slightly more user friendly and definitely a bit more approachable than other games do um but then it's also i think going further than that it's not just doing it better it's like expanding it it's using it as a platform to tell this amazing story or amazing stories which yeah. appeal to like a wide range of people to the point where i think people who are put off by the combat and like maybe from divinity can look at this and go like okay well i'm gonna part for this for a bit because i like these characters and they end up liking the combat as well mm -hmm. yeah and uh, another thing i wonder is if starfield had not been such a huge bummer would <laughs> oh it was <laughs> would Baldur's gate have had like the cultural purchase that it did because it kind of feels like people retreated to Baldur's gate when starfield didn't pan out that's definitely what happened. It's so ironic considering Larian were terrified of releasing so close to Starfield. Right. That was seen as like the automatic winner. I do think it definitely helped because, you know, gamers love their discourse. And it was yeah. really funny to go like, hey, Bethesda, after X amount of years, did this. Larian Indie, indie Studio <laughs> did this. Um, I don't think that's a fair comparison. And Larian has said that as well. They've mm -hmm. defended Bethesda on that front. Um, that definitely, I think, gave it like the initial boost of people dunking on Starfield through Baldur's Gate, and then maybe some gamers checked out Baldur's Gate when they were so disappointed. I yeah. think it still would have had um, a very big audience, though. It would have had that specific niche of like, hey, let's dunk on Todd Howard by playing this RPG instead. But uh, I think the biggest factor here is the lack of like a Bioware RPG. I'm not saying this is just like a Bioware yeah. RPG, but it, it has a lot of the traits that people have missed. Uh, I keep going back to Dragon Age, but like the Dragon Age girlies are loving right. Baldur's Gate 3, right. having never played a Baldur's Gate game before. So I think that's the biggest factor here. And I think it also owes a lot of its success to the success of Critical Role. Oh, undoubtedly so. I mean, that's pushed, you know, D&D into the mainstream to the point where I think there would have always been that apprehension about diving into like a like a game that is 5e D&D. &D. Um, but I think Critical Role obviously softens the blow a little bit. Like mm. you're familiar with these. You've seen these terms before. Yeah. So it is just kind of like a perfect storm of all these things coming together to yeah. make Board Escape for a runaway success. But maybe the most important factor is that uh, you can smooch all the characters. <laughs> right? No, like... 
we joke about that, but unironically, I think it is. And I don't yeah. think there's anything wrong with that. Like, I, I'm so shameless in that, like, when there's an RPG, I'll go, like, is there romances in it? Like, you know, <laughs> I, I, I miss RPGs of romances. Yeah. Um, and this does it pretty damn well, I'd say. So yeah. I think, you know, being able to smooch a cute vampire twink definitely helps, you know? I mean, yeah, I think you said it well. It really is kind of this perfect storm of all these factors. But all of those are sort of outside factors. So let's talk about the game itself. Um, Cause I do want to push back on a couple of things. First of all, this is a very, very long game and I can, I'm sure there's data out there, but I, I suspect that a lot of people that love this game have not finished and will never finish this game. Do you think that that holds it back at all? So I guess I'm a bit biased in the sense that like the, I, in the circles I move in, a lot of people are on their like fifth playthrough already. But oh I my gosh! Think if you're, yeah. yeah, if you're like a more casual RPG fan, the kind of like RPG fan that Larian is immediately after here, yeah, a big drawback is going to be that runtime. I mean, it helps if you're the kind of person that buys two games a year. If this is one of your two games a year, this is fan. This is a fantastic buy. Like, if, I'd hate to use the argument of quality, you know, versus like cost, but sure, it's, it's pretty good, you know. Um, but yeah, you're absolutely right. And I will say one of my problems with it is that the pacing it does feel its length at times. Um, right. I think Act One is so smooth. You know, they really nailed that in early access. Uh, I think when you act two, super quick, by the time you get to act three, I can definitely see some people maybe falling off a little bit at that point because that is, I think that was longer for both acts combined for me. Uh, mm. And it's such a different tone to the first two acts. So I do think maybe that will make it be seen a little bit less favorably over time as people kind of remember it as like an RPG that maybe they really liked but just never finished. Yeah, I that's where I'm coming from too. I feel like this game gets worse the longer you play it i think act one is perfect um and then i fell off because i i think that there's like parts of this game that are actually kind of suck <laughs> <laughs> there's like long combat stretches where you're just like fighting and fighting and fighting it feels like it's never gonna end and it doesn't have any of like like the character charm and those story moments it's just like becomes this gauntlet what do you think about that so i would disagree with that okay. um I um in terms of like I don't think I don't I will agree I think the pacing is an issue in act 3 for the reasons you just said. Mm. I think at that point though um at least I was so invested in these characters that I I was still enjoying myself. Um I really like the comebacks weird like that but yeah. I understand it's it's a bit it's a bit marmite. I'm not sure if you have that expression over there. But I know what it means. That's for the British viewers that. <laughs> <laughs> um so I, I, I totally get that. But at the same time, I just think Act 3, when you stick for it, it's so worth it. It's like one of the most cathartic moments in gaming ever. In, in terms of like, and wow. it's again and again, as everyone's personal quest wraps up, that's when you realize, okay, this was worth it. When you finish the story, you're like, okay, this, this was worth all of these hours. I can't see where they could have made cuts here, here or here. Yeah. I, I really just can't see. I think it had to be as long as it was. Um, and I also think, Part of why I feel like this is because I play games a little bit differently from other people at the game room. By that I mean I don't play enough. <laughs> Everyone else is being good <laughs> little journalists and actually playing new releases. Um, I'm currently having to play enough games so I have a game of the year list <laughs> in two weeks. <laughs> um, so I think it's I can understand why some like people that play a lot of games and like ironically the more hardcore gamers I think are gonna be like okay I'm bored now I'm bouncing off I think weirdly enough even though it looks so inaccessible to casual gamers I think that's where it's gonna find it's like big audience um I mean again going back to my Dragon Age girlies I love you all you know they they've been dying for a game like this since 2014 they've got it now they're gonna be playing the hell out of this they're not gonna care how long act three is yeah they're on I've seen some of them like are on not even fifth they're on their sixth tabs you know or they're doing origin playthroughs this is gonna be a game that i think stays in the conversation for so long um because of its length but then it's also gonna lose people because of its length it's just the kind of thing it's going for yeah what about the fact that it is very buggy so i've been lucky uh i i think pc i totally agree um i saw yeah. the state of it on my partner's pc they're um playing it on not like the most it's a pretty good pc it's not like the most upgraded i don't know a technical term for it i'm mm. i'm a console gamer yeah uh, on ps5 i had very few problems um and because it's so long 
by the time I got to the end, I'd forgiven it. And it, sometimes it was funny stuff, like, you know, I bought a statue of my character and it was T-posing. And I just, I just in my head, it was just lore, you know, my character <laughs> T-poses to assert dominance over everyone else, that's fine. Um, I guess that there are some, though, where I think if I played on PC at launch, maybe I wouldn't be as favourable. But I do understand it had to launch at some point, and I think the state that it launched in for what you you were getting was more than acceptable. Um, I am glad that Larian has stuck with it and fixed some bugs. I yeah. don't think there was anything like game breaking. And I don't think it was abnormal. I think it was on the better end of kind of what we get nowadays. Yeah, and I mean it's not the buggiest game on this game of the year list uh, by <laughs> far. Um, so I guess that's the the next thing is that you know we can't we can't justify why this game deserves game of the year without deciding why the other games don't. Um, and I think it's it, it's really up against Tears of the Kingdom. I, I think most people would agree totally that, agree. that that's its number two. So t- tell us why Baldur's Gate deserves it specifically over Tears of the Kingdom. Okay, so um, I do want to praise Tears of the Kingdom uh, quickly. Yeah. It's just that it's Baldur's Gate, um, Tears of the Kingdom, and I would argue Alan Wake uh, 2 are the games where I think like really deserve to be on this list because they aren't just good games from 2023. They are good games. They are great games. They're going to be seen as some of the best of this decade, quite rightly so. Yeah. However, I think Baldur's Gate 3 just kind of does a little bit more. I, I, I'm trying to find a way to say this without sounding super boring and pretentious, but <laughs> it kind of like... It, it surpasses the confines of being a game. And I hate saying that because it sounds like I'm dissing games. I'm not. Um, but you really get out of it what you put in, um, much like Dungeon Dragons. Um, because I'm sad and I love Borders Gate and D&D, I was coming off my character months in advance. I had her backstory penned out and then I played it and there was nothing that contradicted that backstory. I could have that in my head the whole time. Mm. Some people just go in and they play as an origin character and that's absolutely fine. I just can't think of... Yeah, I love Tears of the Kingdom. It hasn't stuck with me and been part of my life outside of the game as much as PG3 has. I think mm. it's just such a great experience uh, all around. Um, and I, I don't want to talk too much about the outside of the game itself because it's the game itself that matters. But it's the game itself that gives us that. It's the game itself that gives us the foundations to make characters, to ex- ignite our imagination. And I think it deserves to be the game of 2023. Uh, it's still a tough sell. I mean, I hear what you're saying, but when you say you get what you what you put into it, that's Tears of the Kingdom, right? When you say it ignites your creativity, that's for sure Tears of the Kingdom too. Yeah, that's a good point. Um, I guess it is. It, it depends what you're into. Uh, yeah. I'm definitely more of like someone who likes to craft stories and craft crafts, you know, <laughs> <laughs> which craft is boats. totally fine. <laughs> okay, that yeah, fair enough. What about Alan Wake? I actually haven't finished it yet, but I adore it. Again, it's just one of those kind of like genre bending kind of experiences where I'm like, if this ends up representing 2023, which has been a stacked year and absolutely perfect for games, um, I have no problem with that. However, again, I do just think PG3 does that a little bit more and better. I just have a better experience playing it. Um, It's so hard to explain about like going into detail about my tab, which no one wants to hear about. Um, (laughs) But it is just kind of that personalized experience. Um, at one point, uh, I live in a flat with four people and three of us were playing BG3 and I felt like we were all playing different games. Like, mm. it's just so wildly different. I was talking about how much I love a story and my flatmate's like, oh yeah, I killed him. I'm like, oh, okay. <laughs> you know, <laughs> it's just, it is just, I don't think any other game has sort of given me that feeling of like, this is my adventure, you know, uh, how, you know, it's, Again, I'm getting incoherent now. Please stop me. Well, you you also mentioned that this is like uh, BG3 is th- is really connecting with the casual audience. What I which is, uh, to be honest, that's a surprising take. But the casual audience is also very much connecting with Spider Man and Mario Wonder, right? I mean that there's something to be said about having games on the Game of the Year list that are the biggest crowd pleasers that are like going to be touched by the most number of people. Um, when, when George and I talked about uh, Mario wonder last week, I mentioned that uh, my partner played wonder. That's the only game she played this year because she doesn't play games. So to her, that's game of the year. And there must be so many people <laughs> that are on that same page. I mean, isn't I BG three is incredibly popular, but 
way more people are going to play Spider-Man and Mario Wonder now and for years to come, right? I'm not sure if I think um, Spider-Man 2 is going to have the longevity of... I, I guess it, it definitely will. Oh, Spider-Man. Of course, people are going to keep playing it. Yeah. Um, I think BG3 is going to have, like, in terms of, like, a balance of both quantity of people playing it and the people that are, like, really big fans and make this their whole identity for a good period of time, I think it's struck that the most. Um, I do think you can't discount, you know, wider popularity. It's not just us weirdos who play games all day who yeah. <laughs> should have the say in this. But I think, again, on the on the balance of things i think it strikes the best balance of any game on that list um i don't want to leave it completely up to like people that play one game a year i don't want to leave it completely up to people that like write fan fiction about bg3 not calling anyone yeah. out here you know <laughs> um <laughs> but yeah so i get what you're saying but i do think that it's it's, it's going to be part of the conversation for years to come i think it's going to be critiqued for years to come i think people are going to keep finding you can talk about all the themes it explores um i think it's going to define the the decade um in a way that i think marvel spider-man 2 is always going to be a very good game from this decade i don't think it will define it in the way bg3 has yeah all right i mean i i think you're going to be hard pressed to find anyone that disagrees with you uh on this one uh i suspect it will win and i think it it does deserve to win um and i assume that it is your choice to win oh, as well a million yeah. percent not to slide the other games on the list yeah i do love bg3 if you couldn't tell <laughs> uh well uh, preemptive congratulations but <laughs> we'll see uh okay great any last thoughts about Baldur's Gate 3 it's, it's pretty good <laughs> <laughs> play it please please play it and stick with it i promise you will understand the gameplay after the first 10 fights it isn't that scary i think yes there you go i've sold it <laughs> great that's it for this video thank you so much we'll be back with another game of the year video tomorrow don't forget to like subscribe and hit that bell and visit us at thegamer.com that's the gamer no space <laughs>